Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. I know many of you have been waiting for this day with much anticipation. No, not because the Mad Max Fury Road vehicle auctions end today, although I would also be excited to be the proud owner of the infamous Giga Horse, the fuel-efficient war rig, or the iconic Doof Wagon, which I really hope comes complete with the flamethrower guitar. But because it's Sunday and it's time to catch up on a truckload of tech news, bearing down on us like a veritable horde of leather-clad wasteland ruffians in their tricked-out dystopian battle vehicles, I faced this information onslaught like the hero protagonist of some really cool George Miller movie with one one goal, to sort it all out a bit and summarize the good parts in easily digestible themed segments for my weekly show. No! Witness me! Excellent! Today's video is brought to you by Be Quiet, maker of premium PC components, but you don't have to pay a premium price to access their gear. Consider the PureBase 500DX case, available in black or white with tasteful RGB accents, and three PureWings 2 140mm fans included. The PureRock Slim 2 CPU cooler is a huge step up from stock cooling, handling up to 130 watt TDP processors with a whisper quiet 92mm fan, and the PurePower 11FM power supply lineup is fully modular and 80 plus gold rated to silently power your rig for years to come. For more on be Quiet's family of products, click the sponsor link in the video description. Cryptocurrency transactions are now illegal in China, uh, along with a bunch of other things, I would imagine. But the People's Bank of China warned Friday that virtual currency related business activities are illegal and seriously endanger the safety of people's assets. Had you considered that, crypto miners? While trading crypto has technically been banned in China since 2019, Friday's statement indicates that those who continue to do so will now be prosecuted. This continues a push by the Chinese government to crack down on digital currency, which has led to an exodus of crypto mining operations from the mainland and a significant drop in China's Bitcoin energy use, going from 75% of global consumption in September 2019 to 46% in April 2021. Bitcoin's price fell sharply with the news, but only from about 45k down to a low of around 41,000, a modest loss compared to some of the volatility this magic internet money has experienced in the past, it's back to 42 or 43k as of Saturday. And now, I suppose gamers will wait to see if this impacts GPU prices. Did it impact GPU prices yet? No? Yeah, well, PC gamers might cheer at the news of crypto prices dropping, but it's only because they want those prices decoupled from the prices in the GPU market. It's clearer than ever that retail GPU prices are tied to crypto profitability ratings, and data published this week reinforces that. 3D Center in Germany reported 6 to 7% price increases for NVIDIA Ampere and AMD RDNA 2 GPUs since they bottomed out in July and August, now sitting at 170% above MSRP or so. Hardware Unboxed also continued their excellent GPU price analysis on Tuesday as well, concluding that for both retail and used markets, card prices have been on the upswing recently. There is a glimmer of hope in that Nvidia's light hash rate cards like the 3060 Ti have still gone down in price, but it seems that as long as you can make money mining with GPUs, we'll have to deal with inflated commodity pricing. Whether the fix is new generations of cards with further implementation of LHR-like anti-mining features, or the coming of that prophesized the day when the blessed Ethereums shalt cast away the shackles of proof of work and repent, accepting the new covenant of proof of stake and causing a deluge of used GPUs to flood the market, and there will be much rejoicing. Who really knows is what I'm trying to say, but what I'm actually trying to say is that I'm sorry. I was wrong in that video about thinking GPU prices will fall, but there's still three months left in 2021, so maybe? Moving on though, Microsoft surprised at least three or four people on Wednesday by hosting a Surface event, revealing a new Surface Pro 8 tablet laptop hybrid device, just like the leaks several days prior foretold. It'll have an Intel 11th gen i5 or i7 CPU, a 13 inch 120 hertz touchscreen, and two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports for connecting monitors, external drives, or an external GPU. Not bad, Microsoft. They also announced the Surface Laptop Studio, Surface Pro's big brother that used to be called the Surface Book, the Surface Go 3, which is the inexpensive one that starts at 400 bucks, and the Surface Duo 2, a redundantly named Android-based dual-screen folding device with an upgraded triple-lens camera and a glance bar for quick notifications. Only $1,500. Pre-orders for all these Surfaces are open now, and they're available in stores October 5th. 
Hot on the heels of the iPhone 13 launch, which still uses a lightning connector, we have some impactful new tech rules being proposed by the EU's European Commission. USB Type-C phone ports or GTFO. The goal is to reduce waste and encourage reuse of chargers and cables, but Apple said it would harm innovation while hoping you'll overlook the lack of said innovation on their part since they've been using the lightning port for nine plus years now. The rules would apply to phones, tablets, cameras, headphones, speakers, and handheld gaming devices, but they're also still subject to debate by the European Parliament and national governments. So if it does take effect, it won't be until 2022 at the earliest, and then phone makers like Apple would have two years to comply. My next few stories are about Intel, so I'm calling this the Intel part. They're expected to launch their Alder Lake desktop CPUs in mid-November, so they've been steadily increasing the flow of leaks, which I have just been lapping up greedily. Video cards reports on benchmark screenshots leaked from Twitter accounts, which are always reliable, especially when the screenshots feature hastily redacted areas that are done just poorly enough that the underlying text can still be revealed. The first set apparently shows the flagship Alder Lake 12900K scoring over 30,000 points in the Cinebench R23 multi-core test. That would outpace a typical 5950X score by 1,500 points or so, although the strange 8 plus 8 CPU configuration shown in CPU-Z and low voltage for a 5.3 gigahertz clock speed are a little bit suspicious. A follow-up posted Friday sourced screenshots from HXL on Twitter, and they show a Cinebench R23 single core score of 2,050 something. Uh, it's a little bit hard to say because there's nail polish on the image. That's kind of weird, but the internet is a mysterious place. Breaking 2K would be super impressive though, since no CPU currently available scores more than about 1700 without overclocking in this test. Another feature of the upcoming Alder Lake platform is PCI Express 5.0 support. And on Thursday, Kioxia showcased prototype performance for the SSD lineup they plan to launch in Q4 of this year. And they can apparently hit 14,000 megabytes per second read speeds and 7,000 megabytes per second writes. The only downside is that the first batch, the CD7 series, is for data centers and will come in a 2.5 inch EDSFF E3S form factor with a Gen 5 by 4 connection. Expect capacities from 1.6 terabytes to 30 terabytes though, and keep an eye out for the consumer NVMe drives based on the same tech in 2022. One more story for the Intel part, EVGA used to only make Intel motherboards, but not anymore. Tuesday saw the formal launch of the EVGA X570 Dark motherboard with a 17 phase digital VRM design with two built-in fans, a 10 layer PCB, two Intel 2.5 gigabit NICs and Wi-Fi 6. It's an overclocking oriented board, hence the rotated AM4 socket with only two RAM slots instead of four, but it's also a damn good looking board if I do say so myself. Looks like it came to kick ass and it's all out of bubble gum. Jay did a video and tried out the auto OC features. If you guys want to check it out, that's linked in the video description. And now we slip into a silky clean set of tech briefs, this time with even more briefness. Or, well, there are more tech briefs. So is that more brief or less brief? Anyway, let's start out with some industry news, biz briefs. With all the talk of shortages this year, it's good to know that the industry might slowly be setting itself up for an oversupply situation, which I would not mind at all. It would be nice for the pendulum to swing back to the consumer friendly side for a while. The International Data Corporation says the semiconductor market will grow by 17.3% in 2021, up from 10.8% in 2020, with glorious balance between supply and demand expected in mid-2022. By 2023, though, manufacturing capacity will be boosted by new fabs coming online, and hopefully there will just be so many chips available that we'll be able to buy mid-range GPUs for a few bucks each at the corner gas station convenience store. Case in point, on Friday, Intel broke ground on their two new chip factories, Fab 52 and Fab 62, at their Ocotillo campus in Chandler, Arizona. CEO Pat Gelsinger and other high-ranking execs donned hard hats and played at being blue collar workers for a few moments in a classic groundbreaking photo op, momentarily bemused by the shovels and earth moving equipment arrayed before them. After posing briefly with these implements of manual labor, the execs returned to their desk jobs that wouldn't reward them with a lifetime of chronic pain, satisfied that their $20 billion investment would easily pay for a, a bunch of other people to do all that factory building work. The fabs are expected to be fully operational in 2024. Speaking of limitless corporate ambition, the world's largest largest chip maker, TSMC, has set a goal for going carbon neutral by 2050, just shy of 30 years from now, and
and probably well after the inexorable future wars have ravaged the Earth. While carbon neutral chip making presents a range of challenges from materials sourcing to power generation, TSMC says they'll be coordinating with the Taiwanese government on projects like the 920 megawatt wind farm being built in the Taiwan Strait that should be finished in 2026. Meanwhile, back here in the States, President Biden has appointed AMD CEO Dr. Lisa Su to the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology, or PCAST, a group of 30 top scientists and technologists where she will help advise the administration on policy matters where the understanding of science, technology, and innovation is key. Sue joins reps from Google, Microsoft, and NVIDIA on the council, summoned here to answer the threat of Mordor, or the chip shortage. Probably one and then the other. And Amazon has finally gotten hip to the times and doesn't want to be such a square when it comes to their employees engaging in a bit of recreational marijuana use. Workers or applicants who were fired or denied jobs because they decided to hotbox their 92 Civic before their interview will now be A-OK -okay to spark a J or dab it up prior to their shift in Amazon's warehouses and fulfillment centers. As long as it's not a driving job where the damn feds at the Department of Transportation have harsh requirements about impaired operation of heavy equipment, can't they just chill? What, what was I talking about? Oh, right, Amazon is cool now. They're even going to lobby the federal government to legalize it, because getting employees to work long hours for minimal pay at a strenuous job in a fulfillment center is way easier when they're baked out of their gourds. Thanks for not f***ing up the rotation, Amazon. Wow, there are more tech briefs. We've come to the loose collection at the end that I couldn't really fit into a category. Apple is reportedly working with UCLA and Biogen, a pharmaceutical company, to use sensor data from your iPhone to detect depression, anxiety, and cognitive decline. Problems with mental health can benefit greatly from early detection, and warning signs can be derived from analysis of things like facial expressions, speaking patterns, walking pace, and frequency. I have an easier way, though. If you live on the Earth in 2021 and you have access to the internet via an iPhone, there's a good chance that you might be depressed. But maybe you can counter that funk with some fancy new Fortnite-themed duds from Balenciaga, as announced Monday. The new clothing line might look deceptively simple, but there's a reason the button-up shirts cost $995, the ball caps go for $395, hoodies are $725, and this ridiculously oversized denim jacket is $1,300. They say Fortnite on them, and they're made by Balenciaga, which sounds super fancy. Okay, I'm depressed again now. Tech Power Up has dropped GPU-Z version 2.42 though, which will now handily indicate to you whether your NVIDIA GPU is a light hash rate model or not. It will do this in the GPU name field, listing something like GA102LHR. There's a handful of other improvements as well, and I imagine this will come in handy if and when GPU mining falls out of fashion and the used cards flood the market. Really hope that happens. Finally, a post on the PC Master Race subreddit caught my attention this week, showcasing a PC gaming room themed gaming PC built by Su Chao Prao Fong. And my apologies as I doubt I'm pronouncing that properly. The build features innovative use of masking panels to create a cozy gaming room, complete with a Nintendo Switch wall mounted TV and a GPU that doubles as a desk setup. It takes a minute to even realize that there's a water cooled CPU built in, but there's plenty of RGB and incredible attention to detail a truly unique build that made me smile. So I thought it'd be a nice closer for today's show. But there you have it guys, a whole lot of tech news from the past week. And if you're wondering which Mad Max vehicle I'll be riding off into the sunset in, it turns out there was just one auction for all 13 vehicles. So I'll be able to take my pick. But you know, it's, it's gonna be the doof wagon, right? It was always gonna be the doof wagon. Guess I need to book a flight to Australia. Where was I though? Your feedback is always welcome, so please feel free to leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the description. If you're interested in further reading, you can also click the like button if you enjoyed this video. Check out my store at paulshardware.net for a selection of excellent merchandise options, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future. Thanks again everyone, and we'll see you in the next one.